When looking at ways to define your niche, there are some areas you can look at outside of your hobbies and interests. We're going to talk about that today. Hello, Amy's Tribe and SSS Beta Challenge participants. It is August 16th, and today we are talking about how to define your niche um, if perhaps you don't have a hobby or talent uh, that can support enough content to have a, a successful vlog or a successful blog. There are other ways that you can find out what it is that you're really good and proficient at and identify that as your niche for your vlog and blogging projects. Over the past couple days, I've talked about looking at your hobbies and interests as a way to define things that you're really good at and things that you can provide content on a regular basis. But what if you are the type of person that really isn't proficient in one particular thing? And actually, I am a great example of this. I love gardening, um, but I'm certainly no Gertrude Gardner. Uh, I like making jam, but I'm certainly, certainly not Judy Jam Maker. Um, I also like going for bike rides or playing sports, going for a run. Um, but certainly not so proficient in those things that I can create content and write blog posts on a regular basis. So what I did when looking at how to define my niche is I went to one of my favorite resources. It's called the StrengthsFinder 2.0 Inventory. Uh, the StrengthsFinder 2.0 is a book written by Tom Rath as a follow-up to the Gallup organization's Now Discover Your Strengths. And the premise of the two books is uh, identifying what your strongest themes are out of a potential 34 themes. So I've done this inventory a few times and consistently one of my um, strongest themes or strengths is the achiever theme. So when looking at the achiever theme, the achiever is a person who needs to be producing something all the time. That is what where they get their energy, that is where they are their happiest. Um, so the achiever isn't someone who is sitting on a beach with a margarita and reading a nonfiction book. Um, and that's perfectly great for almost everyone else in the world, but it's just not me. It's not where I feel my happiest and, and my most energetic. I would prefer to be doing something and producing something. So a natural transition for me into the blogging world was to create a blog about productivity, about time management, about identifying resources that will help my readers also expand their productivity and creativity and give them some tools to help them manage their time better. Uh, and as a result, I'm really happy with where my blog is going and um, because it speaks to my strengths. It speaks to where I am strongest and where I feel the most energetic. So if you're struggling yourself to find those hobbies and interests that are going to make up your vlogging content, I encourage you to check out this book. And you can find a link to this book uh, in my blog post about finding your strengths. Um, take a look, see where you are your strongest in terms of your themes and, and look at ways at creating some niche content around, um, around your themes. So that's my tip for today when defining your niche. I'll be back tomorrow with a blog actually from uh, my actual blog, Productivity Pantry. Have a great day and we'll see you then. Bye for now.